the South by Southwest 2013. It's uh, Thursday and I'm here with co uh, Eric D Davish, uh, co-founder and chief content officer at Songza. So hi Eric and it's great to have you on the show. How's it going today? Good, how are you? All right, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Songza. You know, it's an incredible growth story. Uh, so my first question would be, you know, um, how did you guys cope with the, the, the growth of the service and were you expecting like, to, to be so as successful as it was from the beginning? So we've, uh, it's actually, Songs is very new to most people, but we've been a company um, since 2006. We started as a digital download store called Amy Street, where we sold MP3s at dynamically priced. So based on, you know, um, when, you, when you came to Amy Street, every song started for free and increased in price the more that it was purchased. There was a social element, there was a gaming element, yeah. and we had a nice little user base, very engaged people, big music fans, a lot of independent artists getting their music discovered, and we had a nice platform. We, um, but you know, in our own personal lives, we were using streaming to discover music, and we found that it was really frictionless, easy way to share music, yeah. easy way to listen and sample. So we started experimenting with Songza, um, and so for a while we were doing both Amy Street and Songza. And yeah. When we started Songza originally, there were, it was a much different product. We tried many different things with Songza, and ultimately we saw a much bigger future with the streaming space and with Songza, yeah. and so decided that we wanted to do that full time. So we sold the Amy Street brand to Amazon, who's an investor in us since 2007, and concentrated on Songza full time starting in 2010. And the songs of product involved several several times throughout those from 2010 to 2012, starting as a social radio service in which we would curate playlists and encourage people to add songs with a similar theme. Yeah. Um, but we, we found that it was hard to regulate the songs that the community would add to a thematic playlist, and it would it would you know the theme would get lost. So we started curating, we closed off playlists and started curating a bit more, um, you know, more thematic playlists and, and we eventually started doing thematic playlists that were based on lifestyle. So, you know, in our own lives we were noticing that we listen to music while we're doing other things. We're listening to music while we're working out, while we're working and it served as a way to make our to enhance our mood, to make what we were doing go by faster, to be better, to be more enjoyable. So um, we decided to build out an expertly curated playlist library based on genres, moods, decades, activities, cultural events, and this thing called Record Store Clerk. And we, in 2011, had come out with the first version of the Songs of Mobile application, which is pretty much our library of playlists that you could browse through. And so you could browse by activity to find workout playlists and then browse through dozens of workout playlists to find the perfect one. Problem with that was that it was a little bit too difficult, a little too labor intensive, a little too men mental math heavy. So that required thought, it required, um, you know, work, it, requ it took, you know, 30 seconds or so to find the perfect playlist, if not more. So we decided after showing it to a lot of people, after you know getting some really great feedback, that we wanted to shorten the process of getting you to the perfect playlist. And instead of making you search for it or find it yourself, we wanted to be able to, to deliver it to you. And in our own anecdotal experience, we were able to deliver people a perfect playlist when we showed it to them in person in about two steps. And so we aimed to simulate that experience with the concierge. And that's sort of how that came about. We debuted that about a year ago, um, first on the web, then on iPhone, uh, Android, um, and on tablets for both of those platforms. And when we debuted our iPad app in June of last year, we um, got featured on the front page of the iTunes App Store, went to number one on their charts, downloaded, um, got 1.15 million installations on iOS platforms alone uh, in a week so um, you know that was that was when people really started to pay attention to us and that's when people really started to acknowledge our existence um, yeah, uh, it, it kind of it almost felt like there was a point last year where where the company you know exploded the service exploded in terms of user base and I kept you know of course being in the UK I couldn't access it but I could, I could see a lot of tweets about it and 
and uh, that kind of led me to believe that it was a relatively new story but uh, in fact it had been a very long development and, and, and of course that's probably why you, you guys managed to cope so well with the, with the growth of the user base as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, even though we didn't come up with the concierge idea until 2000, 2011, 2012, you know, we had always, from day one, 2006, been aiming to come up with the best music discovery and easy listening experience because we are aware, we're all big, big, big music fans. And, you know, I myself am a musician, you know, we understand that there's a whole universe of music and we love so much of it. You know, we love all different types of genres and you sh there's a place for that in every part of your life. There's a place for every kind of music in every part of your life, but when it's not presented to you in a contextually relevant way, you might not enjoy it. And so it took us a long time to realize how important contextual relevance was in music discovery. Um, and, you know, everything that we did from the beginning you know, and everything that we, we'd always aim to provide that sort of best and, and in the future, you know, personalized music discovery experience and, you know, con contextual relevance and, you know, the way that music is positioned it's on songs as a lifestyle enhancement uh, was, was the real crucial uh, change in thought pattern for us. It took us a while to get there, but, you know, now that we're there, you're seeing other other people follow. And of course here at South by we're on, you know, Songs are home, home, home turf uh, in the US. Uh, how, how do you feel the reception to the company is here at South by and uh, how do you feel about the, the event as a whole? You know, I uh, always love coming down to South by. Um, it's, it's a crazy couple days. Um, as you can tell, I'm already horse. I mean, I've been horse for a few days. Um, so. I've, I've been doing my fair share. Um, it's great. You know, I, we meet a ton of people during the interactive and the music portion. Um, every you know, year prior, I would have to tell them what I do, every single person. This year, I'd say the vast majority of the people that I met are familiar with Songza. They use it, they love it. Um, and then if, if uh, they haven't, I show it to them and they instantly love it on the spot. So it's really great, um, but you know, even more than that, we love, you know, it's great to hear when people, you know, that people love songs, but what we, you know, we're so focused on improving the product always that, you know, anyone who tells me that, that they love songs, I, I will ask them, you know, what can we do to make it better? You know, what do you not like about songs? Uh, it's part of our DNA is to, you know, question all our assumptions that we've made, um, you know, all the punches that we've had, um, all the, you know, all the features that we've got, all the potential features that we could make, you know, what could we do to make that even better? Because, you know, we're going to need to, you know, th there's a lot, there's a long way for us to go. You'd be surprised, you know, people th think that songs is perfect, but there's a lot that we can do to make songs better, and there's a lot that we have planned that's going to really, um, you know, really surprise and delight you. Um, as you continue to use the service. And so we want to make sure that we're always ahead of that, um, always innovating and always thinking creatively in that respect. Sure. And just to finish, uh, um, uh, talking about of course, this uh, streaming, uh, you know, streaming radio, internet radio market is, uh, is a healthy one, uh, but there's also a, a question of, of course, uh, uh, how, what, what percentage of, you know, company's uh, income, of course, uh, goes to paying the licenses and to paying, you know, uh, for, for the use of the music. So what are you guys' uh, uh, main aims in terms of monetization on, on Songza? So right now we, we've monetized in a number of ways, um, mainly ad supported. So uh, we have banner ad display advertisements that show up on our applications. Um, we also work with brands to create custom content. Um, so, you know, we might work with Victoria's Secret Pink or Mercedes-Benz to do, you know, customized playlists, maybe branded situations that are native, that are part of the concierge, that are part of the song's experience. Um, you know, we, and so, you know, it's, it's working a lot with brands. We've also done, you know, we also have a, a white label service that we've worked with one client on, but um, it's not a huge part of our business. Um, but, you know, it's, it's working with brands to not only run media, 
um, but also to create custom engaging content that's part of the songs of experience that's going to make people's songs of experience better and not serve as an interrupter. Uh, it's great talking to you. Thanks for your time. Uh, have a great South Absolutely. Thanks for having me.